For some reason, our work world has changed over the past 20 and 30 years. We are suffering the side effect of business theories left over from the 80s and 90s. And they are bad for people, and they are bad for business. Let me give you an example. The concept of shareholder supremacy was a theory proposed in the late 1970s. It, it was popularized in the 80s and 90s. It is now standard form today. You talk to any public company and you ask them their priority and they say maximize shareholder value. Really? That's like a coach prioritizing the needs of the fans over the needs of the players. How are you going to build a winning team with that model? But that's normal today. We don't even perceive it as broken or damaged or wrong or outdated. Remember, the 80s and 90s were boom years with relative peace and a kinder, gentler Cold War. Nobody was practicing hiding under their desks in school anymore. We are no longer in those times. These are no longer boom years. These are no longer peaceful times, and those models cannot work today. Here's another one. Mass layoffs. Using someone's livelihood to balance the books, right? It's so normal in America today that we don't even understand how broken and how damaging it is, not only to human beings, but to business. You know, companies talk about how they want to build trust and cooperation, and they announce a round of layoffs. Do you know the quickest way to destroy trust and destroy cooperation in a business, literally in one day? Lay people off, and everyone gets scared. Right? Can you imagine sending someone home to say, honey, I can no longer provide for our family because the company missed its arbitrary projections this year? And forget about the people who lost their job. Think about the people who kept their jobs. Because every single decision a company makes is a piece of communication. And the company, co the company has just communicated to everybody else, this is not a meritocracy. We don't care how hard you work or how long you've worked here. If we miss our numbers and you happen to fall on the wrong side of the spreadsheet, I'm sorry, we cannot guarantee employment. In other words, we come to work every day afraid. And we're asking our youngest generation to work in environments where how would any of us ever stand up and admit, I made a mistake? We're constantly being told, you have to be vulnerable. Leaders are vulnerable. What does that even mean? It doesn't mean you walk around crying. I'm vulnerable, right? <laughs> no, what vulnerability means is you create an environment in which someone feels safe enough to raise their hand and say, I don't know what I'm doing. You've given me a job and I haven't been trained to do it. I need help. I made a mistake. I screwed something up. I'm scared. I'm worried. All of these things no one would ever admit inside a company because it puts a target on your head in case there's another round. And so we keep it to ourselves. And how can a company ever do well if nobody's ever willing to admit they made a mistake that's scared or they don't know what they're doing? And so we've literally created cultures in which every single day everybody comes to work and lie, hide, lies, hides, and fakes. I, I'm sure you, you've, you've heard some of the rumors circulating around the hallways about how we're going to be doing a house cleaning with some of the software people. Well, Bob, I have heard that, and you've got to do what you've got to do. We're going to be getting rid of these people here. Uh, first, Mr. Samir Naga... Not going to work here anymore, anyway. <laughs> And Mr. Mike Bolton. Nobody's going to miss him. You're going to lay off Samir and Michael. Oh, yeah, we're going to bring in some uh, entry-level graduates, farm some work out to Singapore. It's the usual deal. Yeah. Well, standard operating procedure. Do they know this yet? No, no, of course not. <laughs> we find it's always better to fire people on a Friday. Studies have statistically shown that there's less chance of an incident if you do it at the end of the week. Anyway, Peter, what we'd like to do...